In this video, we are going to be creating a simple spike trap that launches our character and then after a timer, resets our level so that we can play again. This is going to be an easy to follow tutorial, so let's get started with the theory behind what we're doing today. We're going to create some sort of object that is going to house our spikes. These spikes specifically are going to have some sort of collision attached to them. In the event that our player hits these spikes, we are going to trigger an event that is going to do something to our character and then reload our level. Now that we have purpose, let's go into our C++ classes and create a new C++ class of type actor that we're going to be using for our spike trap. I'm calling this spike trap and we can open this up. Starting in the header file, we are going to need some private properties to help us out here. So let's go to the bottom of the file and create a private section where we're going to need all of our properties. These are the properties we're gonna need. First, we have the actual mesh component, which is called spike mesh, and this is going to be the physical representation of our spikes. The collision for our spikes is going to be present on this mesh component. Then to handle the actual hit, we're going to create a function called onComponentHit that requires all of these variables, and this is what Unreal Engine wants, so this is what Unreal Engine gets. It's very important to tag this with the U function, otherwise things do not work properly. Then I think it's going to be important to implement some sort of delay, so we're gonna create a timer handle variable called the restart timer that we're going to use to set a timer later. And then we're going to have a void function called handle reset that is simply going to handle what we want to happen after the reset to keep things all concise and in this one file. So I'm going to alt enter to create the definition of both of these variables inside of my C++ file and then we're good to go and start filling in all of these pieces. First we're going up to the constructor and we're going to create our spike object. So we're going to take our spike mesh and we're going to use create default sub object in order to create the spike mesh inside of our blueprint and it's going to be of type use static mesh component because that's what we said it should be earlier. Inside of begin play, we're going to define a relationship between our spike mesh and this on component hit method so that when our spike is hit, we are going to call this. We're gonna do this with this line of code. This is saying that when our spike mesh, which is this object that we created up here, is hit, we're gonna define a relationship between this object and the on component hit method that we have defined down here. It's important to note that this could be named anything. I just used on component hit because that is simplistic, but do not be confused that this is named the exact same as the spike meshes on component hit. This on component hit is specifically talking about if the spike mesh or this U static mesh component has been hit. Whereas this is the method that we defined inside of our spike trap C++ file. So next we're gonna do our on component hit. And before we can do the on component hit, there's one type of include that we're going to need. And that's going to be to include the header file for whatever your character's file is. So in my case, I'm using the third person tutorial project so my header file is called third person tutorial character .h. I'm gonna include that so I can cast to that object type without issues. And then one more include we're going to need is to actually set up our timer, and that is going to be the timer manager .h. Again, make sure this is here, otherwise you won't be able to create the timer without having errors. So now we're good to go down into on component hit and actually do the business. And here's the code we're gonna need. And you can see that this is following the theory that we had set up before. If we hit our character, then we're going to do something to the character, and then we're going to prepare to reset the world after a certain amount of time. Now you can do whatever the heck you want to do to your character, but for the purposes of me today, I'm just going to be launching our character in a big amount in a general direction. If we look at the launch character method a little more closely here, we can see that it takes in a launch velocity, which is the direction and force that it's going to be flying. And then we also can override the X and Y axis and the Z axis separately. I'm opting to do all of this because I just want it to be the most important thing that's happening. Now let's talk about this if statement. This if statement is creating a variable of type third person tutorial character, and it is going to be equal to the result of a cast between the other actor involved in this collision casted towards that third person tutorial character. Or in other words, if the other actor is a third person tutorial character, this entire statement is going to be defined as true because our character is going to be set to the third person tutorial character version of other actor through this cast. So this is simultaneously defining a variable of the right type that we can use inside of this if statement and it is also making sure through this check by this variable no longer being null that this cast is successful. I hope that makes sense. 
So if we have actually hit our third person tutorial character, then we're going to launch them and then we're going to set a timer. Now I will be completely upfront with you. Timers inside of C++ is still something that I am learning a lot about. However, this is a format that works the best for me at this time. First, we get the timer manager of our world. There is a function off of that that we call called set timer. And if we want to execute a function after a time has passed, then this is the best way that I've found to do it. The only prerequisite and warning that I have to you is things get weird very fast if the function you want to call is outside of the class that you are using. So if I was using anything outside of my spike trap class, things seem to get weird really fast. But for the purposes of today, we don't have to worry about that. So this set timer method takes in this restart timer, which is an F timer handle. It just needs one of those. Next, we pass in this because this is where we want to handle the reset. I don't know if that's actually the relationship. Again, me and timers don't necessarily get along very well. But regardless, we then can choose the method that we want to call in this class. And that is going to be our handle reset function down here. And then finally, this is the actual delay that you're going to be implementing. So now we're going to actually go and handle the reset, which is the function that is called after this timer is done. And in order to cause this reset to happen efficiently, we're going to be using the UGamePlayStatics library. So let's scroll to the top of our file, and we're going to include our gameplay statics off of the Kismet. With that set, we're good to handle our reset. And that's going to be done using this code here. So let's break this down. We are using the open level method and open level needs the world context, which we can use by using get world because that gets our world context. And then it needs the name of the level that we are going to be loading. It's important to note here that we need to give this an F name type. There's another great method off of you gameplay statics called get current level name. And we can see that referenced up here, but this returns a string. So what we're doing in this line of code is we are declaring an f name variable because that is the type that we need to give to our other method and we're giving it a name because we love names and we are setting that to be equal to the f name version of the get current level name of this world so we set all that up and this is now going to properly reload our level once we step on the spike trap and die so let's save everything we've worked on and compile this with a successful compile, we're going to right click on this C++ file and create a blueprint class that is based off of this CPP file. I'm going to throw this into content and the word my spike trap sounds just dandy. We can open that up and we can see this very simple object. I'm going to click on my spike mesh here and I'm going to give it some skin. Now I slaved away in Blender and I did create an asset for this called Spike Trap. It's a spike trap. They're the most threatening spikes I've ever seen. And to make things a step further, I'm going to compile this and then I'm going to set a nice red material for my spikes so that everyone knows these are bad. So I'm gonna compile and save this and I'll close out of this now that we have our spike trap set up and I'm just gonna drag this into the world and I'm going to raise it skyward so that all of the spikes and all their glory show up. Then using hotkey R, I'm going to resize this so it is less uh, threatening and a little easier for us to go and see. Now when I hit play, we have this very threatening spike trap. And when I jump on it, it throws me in a direction. And after our timer counts down, the level resets where I can go and do it again because I'm a glutton for punishment. And just like that, you now have a working spike trap. You can place this object on all of your caverns and you can change the actual implementation to do whatever the heck you want it to do when your player falls on this spike trap. So subscribe to the channel because as I continue to learn on Real Engine, I am going to be posting more videos talking about what I've learned so that you can have an easier time doing so than me. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time.